normal RBC count has to be maintained within a normal range. If RBC count falls below normal, oxygen supply to tissues is hampered. If it rises above normal, blood viscosity increases. In short, synthesis of RBCs must be a highly regulated process to keep it within a normal range. So what are the requirements for this? For RBC production, each of these stages of erythropoiesis should progress normally. Progenitor cells should divide and form blast cells. Blast cells will mature and there will be incorporation of hemoglobin to finally produce mature RBCs. So, how this process is regulated? The factor which favors cell multiplication and differentiation of progenitor cells is released on sensing decreased oxygen supply to the tissues. It appears logical to sense the end result of RBC production, that is its function, to ensure adequate number of RBCs. So, if oxygen supply is less, there will be increased production of RBC, right? Which in turn will facilitate proper oxygen supply. So, it's a classical negative feedback system operating here. But not only that, sometimes even if number of RBCs are in normal range, there may be other conditions causing decreased supply to tissues as occurs in high altitude. Okay, so what are the specific features of this control system? Basically, decreased oxygen supply is sensed by kidneys. There are certain cells in kidneys known as cortical interstitial cells which sense this decreased oxygen supply and then they cause release of erythropoietin. Now, this erythropoietin acts on progenitor cells. They have a receptor on which erythropoietin acts known as erythropoietin receptor. So, after this interaction, there is multiplication of the progenitor cells, their differentiation of progenitor cells. So, basically, this erythropoietin shifts the balance to production of RBCs. Now, apart from this regulation for production of RBCs, there are certain raw materials which should be available for the process to take place continuously. So, once these progenitor cells proliferate and blast cells are formed, for maturation of the cells, vitamin B12 and folic acid are required. So, these are important for synthesis of DNA. And if uh, DNA synthesis is not taking place, then cytoplasm will keep growing but the cells will not divide further. Some raw materials are required for synthesis of hemoglobin. So, what are these raw materials? Now, hemoglobin is composed of two parts, heme and a protein part known as globin. Now, heme consists of an organic ring known as protoporphyrin. This protoporphyrin binds iron in its ferrous state which in turn binds to molecular oxygen. So obviously if there is deficiency of iron, hemoglobin synthesis cannot take place. Heme portion of hemoglobin uh, will not form. Similarly for the globin component, amino acids are required because it is a protein component of the hemoglobin. So in case of malnutrition, if there is protein deficiency, again there will be deficiency of hemoglobin synthesis, there will be anemia. Apart from this, there are some subsidiary nutritional factors that is uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C is required for uh, absorption of uh, iron from the gut. There is requirement for uh, copper. It ensures transport of iron and its uptake by erythroblast. Cobalt is required here because cobalt is a cofactor for uh, cyanocobalamin which is the active component of vitamin uh, B12. Uh, there are certain other hormones which indirectly affect the production of RBCs. These are uh, thyroid hormones, testosterone, growth hormone. Basically, all these hormones increase the metabolic activity in body. If metabolic activity is uh, increased, oxygen requirement increases. So, by that indirect mechanism, by decreasing oxygen supply, they basically activate this control mechanism for RBC production. So, if we summarize, what are the factors which are required for uh, RBC production? There are certain hormones. So, it includes erythropoietin, thyroid hormones, then growth hormone and uh, testosterone and there are certain raw materials which uh, are not actually regulating erythropoiesis so obviously if they will be deficient they will cause decrease in rbc production so these are vitamin b12 folic acid iron amino acids then uh, for iron absorption there is uh, vitamin c there is copper for proper vitamin b12 function there is cobalt